It is also the reasoning behind using military power to export an illogical version of freedom and false democratic ideals. The reason it can be called the justification for modern conflicts and war with impunity is because no one can prove Hegel's theory is true. No matter how many new words they make up to define it, or how many new theories they come up with to give it validity, it can be proved beyond a doubt that it is all false. The Hegelian dialectic is the ridiculous idea that constant conflict and continual merging of opposite ideologies, as established by extreme right or left belief systems, will lead spiritual mankind into final perfection. Americans understood man's spiritual quests to be outside the realm of government control. Hegel's brilliance rests in his ability to confuse and obfuscate the true motives of the planners, and millions of people worldwide have been trying to make sense of why it doesn't work for over 150 years. But like the AA definition of insanity, the world keeps trying it over and over expecting different results. When Frederick Engels and Karl Marx based their communist theory on Hegel's theory of spiritual advancement via constant resolution of differences, they based the theory of communism on an unproven theory. While Darwin's theory of evolution is still being debated, there's absolutely no proof that societies are continually evolving. When Engels and Marx later based their communist theory on Lewis Henry Morgan's theory of anthropology, in 1877, they again based the theory of communism on an unprovable theory. And when Amin Ayatsiani used Hegelian reasoning to base the communitarian network on a balance between B, rights and B, responsibilities, he built the entire theory of C, communitarianism on nothing but disproven and unprovable unscientific theories. Already gaining substantial ground against the Americans, British Marxism was bolstered when Charles Darwin published his theory of human evolution, in 1859. Engels, according to modern-day scholars, seized upon Darwin's theory to substantiate communism. When Marx read The Origin of Species he wrote to Engels, that, although it is developed in the crude English style, this is the book which contains the basis in natural history for our view. They turned against what they saw, as the social, as opposed to the biological, implications of Darwinism, when they realized that it contained no support for their shibboleth of class oppression. Since they were slippery customers rather than scientists, they were not likely to relinquish their views just because something did not fit. C. Marxism and Darwinism by Anton Panikoek 1912. In 1877 Lewis Henry Morgan published Ancient Society, or Researches in Life, Lines of, of Human Progress from Savagery, through Barbarism, to Civilization. Then the slippery angle seized upon Morgan's work as the constantly evolving basis for the totally unsubstantiated theory of natural social evolution into utopian world communism. Hegel's formula has been so successful that in 2003 all U.S. domestic and foreign policy was dominated by communitarian thinking. The whole country is living under the new laws, and yet Americans most affected by impenetrable Hegelian laws have never once heard the term used. Conclusions The Hegelian dialectic presupposes the factual basis for the theory of social evolutionary principles, which coincidentally backed up Marx. Marx's Darwinian theory of the social evolution of the species, even though it has been used for a century to create a vast new scientific community, including eugenics and socio-economics, does not adhere to the basis for all good scientific research and appears to exist mainly to advance itself and all its sub-socio-scientific arms as the more moral human science. The communitarian solution is based on a false premise because there is no factual basis that social evolution of the species exists, based, as it is only on Darwinian and Marxist ideology of man's natural evolution towards a British version of utopia. The London Marxist platform in 1847 was to abolish private property. The American Revolution was based in private property rights. Marxist societies confiscate wealth, and promise to redistribute it equally. America promised everyone they could keep and control what was the product of their own labor. Modern Marxist adherents openly claim they will rebuild the world, and they train activist change agents 
to openly support overthrowing the legitimate governments of the world. Since their inception, Marxist agent provocateurs can be linked to every anarchist assassination and student uprising that caused chaos to the established European civilization throughout the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. Modern Americans have succumbed to the conspiracy theory label and will only listen to what the propaganda machines tell them. Now people don't believe anyone other than maybe the Arab world hates our freedom. Most modern Americans will never know what went wrong with their great experiment in democracy. While the Marxist communitarian argument has not provided a shred of evidence to prove their utopian vision, and their synthesis does not match their own projected conclusions of world justice, we are convinced their argument does in fact substantiate one conclusion, that the entire philosophical dialectical argument is nothing but a br brilliant ruse. The dialectical arguments for human rights, social equity, and world peace and justice are a perfectly designed diversion in the defeated British Empire's Hegelian Fabian metaphysical theosophical monopoly game. It's the most successful con job in the history of the modern world. For a well-presented Christian overview of the con, see American Babylon, Part 5. The Triumph of the Merchants by Peter Goodgame. The communitarian synthesis is the final silent move in a well-designed, quietly implemented plot to remake the world into colonies. The bottom line is the Hegelian dialectic sets up the scene for state intervention, confiscation, and redistribution in the United States and the world, and this is against the entire constitutional base society. The Hegelian dialectic is not a conspiracy theory, because the conspiracy theory is a fraud. We've all been duped by global elitists who plan to take totalitarian control of all nations' people, property, and produce. Communitarian plans exist in every corner of the world, and nobody at the local level will explain why there's no national legal avenue to withdraw from the United Nations Community Development Plans. The Fabian Society of Australia explains the Hegelian Marxist Third Way Synthesis. Reinventing Collectivism, The New Social Democracy by Mark Latham, Member for Wa Third Way Conference, Center for Applied Economic Research, University of New South Wales, Sydney, the 12th of July, 2001. Over the past decade, a group of social democrats have moved down the reinvention path. They have developed a distinctive political project, exploring the new institutions and forms of a collective society. In the United States, Bill Clinton called it the third way. In Britain, Tony Blair has made it the work of new labor. Quotes that validate the thesis that communitarianism is the synthesis in the Hegelian dialectic. People are living in a snarled-up subset of Marxist thinking, and do not know it. They twist logic to get to conclusions that will suit the current prejudices. They garnish it with a little Christianity or mysticism, or whatever, though these play no important part in their world outlook. Truth Overlooked, the legacy of this by Gwydion M. Williams, also available via Cal State Law Poll's 426 online reading list. The Socialist Alliance program is the foundation upon which everything else is built, including in time our exact organizational forms and constantly shifting tactics. The program links our continuous and what should be all-encompassing agitational work with the ultimate aim of a communitarian or communist system. Put another way, the program represents the dialectical unity between theory and practice. Remember. When we remain locked into dialectical thinking, we cannot see out of the box. Once we get what's really going on, we can cut the strings and move our lives in original directions outside the confines of the dialectical madness. This releases us from the limitations of controlled and guided thought. Learn and teach your children to identify the change agents, the instigators, and the facilitators within your communities and schools. Call them for what they are. Expose the neo-Marxist pro-communitarian nature of their arguments and actions. Remember, they need your cooperation, without it, they have nothing. And make it clear to them that you know what they are up to, and that you will not go along with their dialectical madness. Basically tell them to go mock themselves, been they done that. Thank you for listening.